Hi everyone, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we introduced the notion of a partial derivative. These were sort of like the derivatives you knew back in Calc 1, except now our function doesn't have just one variable. So we don't have just one rate of change. Suppose, for example, that we're dealing with a function of two variables, x and y. If I stand at a point on the graph of that function, and the surface there is nice and smooth, then I'm going to have a rate of change as I move parallel to the x-axis. We call this the partial derivative with respect to x. On the other hand, if I move parallel to the y-axis, I might have a completely different rate of change, which we refer to as the partial derivative with respect to y. So derivatives may be a little bit more complicated in Calc 3, but the nice thing is we can still talk about rates of change just like we did back in Calc 1. Now I want you to think back to your Calc 1 course one more time. Once you introduce the notion of a derivative, what's the next thing you did with it? Well, chances are you use that derivative to find the equation of the tangent line to your curve. The tangent line at some point x equals a in the domain. After all, the derivative geometrically represents the slope of the tangent line. So using our equation of the line formula, we get something like this. At x equals a, the tangent line is y equals f prime a times x minus a plus f of a. You may remember from Calc 1 that the tangent line is often referred to as a linear approximation for our function f. And that's because we can use the tangent line to approximate values of our function near x equals a. We'll say more about this in the next lesson, but for now, just note that finding the equation of the tangent line is something we really want to be able to do. And so we're going to try to do the same sort of thing in Calc 3. Specifically, if we're standing at a point on the surface of our graph, can we find the equation of this tangent line moving in the x direction? And can we find the equation of this tangent line moving in the y direction? Well, I think that we could. We could probably use methods similar to what we saw in Calc 1, but we can actually do a little bit better. You see, we know from linear algebra that two intersecting lines in R3 determine a plane in R3. And as long as our function is reasonably well behaved, that plane will sit tangent to our surface at this point. So in Calc 3, we don't have just a single tangent line. We have an entire tangent plane that will allow us to approximate the values of our function in all different directions. Pretty cool, huh? For the remainder of this lesson, we're going to use our knowledge of partial derivatives to find the equation of this plane. Okay, folks, we're looking for the equation of this plane that sits tangent to our curve at the point x0, y0, z0. How do you find the equation of a plane again? Oh, right, we need two things. We need a point on the plane, which is given to us here, but we also need the plane's normal vector, the vector that stands perpendicular to the surface of the plane. Maybe we'll call this n and say its entries are n1, n2, n3. Once we have these two ingredients, our plane is given by the equation n1 times x minus x0 plus n2 times y minus y0 plus n3 times z minus z0 is equal to zero. So the real question is, how do you find the entries of this normal vector n? Okay, well let's take a step back and think about what we know about this plane. We know that our plane is going to contain both of these tangent lines, the tangent line in the x direction and the tangent line in the y direction. Ah, so if we could find the direction vectors of those lines, then we could take their cross product. The cross product of the direction vectors will give us a vector that's normal to the plane. Okay, so we have a new question. How do we find these two direction vectors d1 and d2? Well, let's start with d1. D1 is the direction vector for this line that runs parallel to the x-axis. Since this line is moving exclusively in the x-direction, it has no y-component, right? It's not moving side to side. So in D1, the second component is going to be 0. We're also not really interested in the length of this vector, right? We only care about the direction. So why don't we simplify things and assume we're moving one unit in the x-direction. Our x-component is 1. All that remains is to figure out z. If we're taking one step in the x direction, we would probably expect the z component to change according to the slope of this line. Ah, but this is the tangent line in the x direction, so its slope is given by the partial derivative, 
the partial derivative with respect to x evaluated at x naught y naught. So there you go, we found our first direction vector, and we can do the same sort of thing to find our other direction vector. d2 moves exclusively in the y direction, so its x component is 0. We can also assume that we're taking one step in the y direction, because the length doesn't matter here. How do we expect the z value to change? Well, since we're moving along a tangent line, the slope is going to be fy of x naught y naught, and that will be our change in z. I'll let you work through the cross product calculation, but what you should get is minus fx, x naught y naught, minus fy, x naught y naught, and 1. This is our normal vector n. Using this equation we have above, we can write down the equation of our tangent plane. It is minus fx, x naught y naught, times x minus x naught, minus fy, x naught y naught, times y minus y naught, plus 1, z minus z naught is equal to 0. Now, usually we like to express our function as z equals f of x, y. So I'm going to keep the z on the left and move everything else to the right. We get z is equal to fx, x naught, y naught, times x minus x naught, plus fy, x naught, y naught, times y minus y naught, plus this z naught term. But remember, z naught is the value of the function at the point x naught y naught. So I could rewrite this as f of x naught y naught. And there you have it, folks, the equation of our tangent plane. As an exercise, I encourage you to go back and compare this with the equation of our tangent line. They actually look pretty similar. For now, though, let's check out an example. Okay, folks, we've just derived the formula for the equation of a tangent plane, and now we're going to put this formula to use. I want to know the equation of the tangent plane to the function fxy equals x over y squared plus 1 at the point 2, 1. Okay, so we need to take a look at the tangent plane equation and think about what exactly we're going to need from our function. Based on the equation which I've given for you here, we are going to need the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. We're also going to need to know these special values x naught and y naught. Oh, hold on a second, those are the values where the plane is tangent to the curve. So I think my x naught and y naught should be 2, 1. As for the partial derivatives, we can find these using the equation of our function. To find fx, for example, we would differentiate this expression with respect to x, treating y like a constant. So in this case, I have x divided by what I'm going to consider to be a constant. The derivative is going to be 1 divided by y squared plus 1. For fy, on the other hand, we have y's in the denominator, so we're going to need probably the quotient rule. To remember the quotient rule, I always say this little rhyme. Low d high minus high d low, square the bottom and away we go. So let's use it. Low, that's y squared plus 1 d high, and of course we're calculating the derivative with respect to y here, so partial by partial y of x, minus high, that's x, d low, partial by partial y of y squared plus 1, and we square the bottom and away we go. Now we simplify. Since we're taking the derivative with respect to y, this term is going to become 0. We're simply left with minus 2xy divided by y squared plus 1 squared. At this point, we have to plug in the point x naught y naught to our partial derivatives. By plugging into fx, we get that fx of 2, 1 is 1 over 1 squared plus 1, or 1 half. By plugging into fy, we get that fy of 2, 1 is minus 2 times 2 times 1 divided by 1 squared plus 1 squared. I'll let you clean this up, but what you should get is minus 1. Now let's put all the pieces together to get the equation of our tangent plane. All right, folks, let's wrap up this problem. The tangent plane to our function at the point 2, 1 is given by an equation that looks something like this. And at this point, we've actually found a lot of these quantities. We found that fx at the point x naught y naught, which in this case is 2, 1, has a value of 1 half fy at the point 2, 1 has a value of negative 1. We also need the value of the function itself at 2, 1, which we can get by plugging into our formula. We would get 2 over 1 squared plus 1, which is 1. 
Putting all the ingredients together, our tangent plane is given by the equation z equals 1 half x minus 2 minus 1 times y minus 1 plus 1. And there you have it, folks, the scalar equation of our tangent plane. To end this example, I've included the graph of the function z equals f of x, y in green. And the tangent plane we've just found is shown here in red. You can see that at the point 2, 1, the plane really is tangent to the curve.